This was Poland after the devastation of World War II, a poor, war-ridden country with a per capita GDP among the lowest in Europe, a nation dwarfed by the massive shadow of the Soviet Union, marked by enormous sovereign debt, widespread unemployment, and devoid of hope. And this is the Poland of 2023, a free market economy, an economic powerhouse, a hub for technology, a favorite of investors, and the growth engine of Europe. Poland's journey is nothing short of phenomenal. From the skyscrapers of Warsaw to the agrarian heartlands of Wielkopolska, this is a tale of urban metamorphosis, a transformation that's echoing through every corner of this vast nation. Buckle up as we unravel the extraordinary narrative of Poland's rise, its opportunities, its challenges, and its undeniable impact on the world stage. After World War II, when Poland collected itself from ashes, it inherited an economy with a per capita income of a mere $70, lagging far behind the global average. From the scars of European negligence in World War II, Poland decided to shift towards the USSR and became a satellite state of the Soviet Union within the Eastern Bloc. This era saw limitations on political freedoms and democratic processes in Poland, the ruling Communist Party maintained a monopoly on political power, suppressing dissent and opposition. Poland followed the Soviet framework on the economic front, too, and adopted a centrally planned architecture to run its economy. The state controlled key industries, resources, and economic planning. And because of the inefficiencies in its centrally planned system, the country faced severe challenges and economic hardships, stagnant growth, growing national debt, lower standard of living, and much more. And as the Soviet Union began to collapse, the situation started to worsen further for Poland. The country had to face hyperinflation, economic instability, and a severe financial crisis, all at the same time. The fall of the USSR also marked the end of the communist rule in Poland. The highest priority for the newly elected democratic government was to address the economic challenges. It did so by implementing a set of market-oriented reforms known as shock therapy. This approach involved rapid and comprehensive economic changes aimed at transitioning from a centrally planned to a market-driven economy. One of the key elements of shock therapy was the rapid privatization of state-owned enterprises. The goal was to transfer assets from state control to private ownership, encouraging efficiency and competition. The reforms included the liberalization of prices, allowing market forces to determine prices rather than relying on government controls. Poland also introduced a new currency, the Polish Złoty, and re-denominated it to stabilize the economy and control hyperinflation. Efforts were also made to stabilize public finances, control inflation, and attract foreign investment. And soon enough, Poland's efforts started fructifying. A country that used to grow at less than 5% annually suddenly started growing at 7% plus rates. Inflation, which was over 40% in 1989, decreased to 7% in 1994. Foreign investment, which was negligible till 1990, exceeded $4 billion by 1995. And unemployment, which was around 14% in 1992, decreased to 10% by 1995. Poland was on a spree, executing massive transformative reforms one after the other. Once the effects from the shock therapy started diminishing, Poland pulled off another magic trick from its sleeves. On May 1st, 2004, Poland joined the European Union. This tectonic shift proved to be the next leg of growth for Poland. Joining the EU provided Polish businesses with access to a much larger and integrated market. EU membership combined with its relatively cheaper labor in comparison to established European players also made Poland an even more attractive destination for foreign direct investment. Not only this, Poland also became eligible for financial assistance and development programs funded by the EU. One of the biggest beneficiaries of this change was the Polish services sector. 
Soon after joining the EU, Warsaw, Poland's capital, developed into a fully grown financial hub, catering to Central and Eastern European geographies. The city now hosts numerous international banks, financial institutions, and service providers. Along with finance, other peripheral industries also fortified their roots in Poland. The country now has offices of every major international consulting, accounting, legal services, and financial analysis firm. Joining the EU also helped the Polish tourism industry. Poland has always been famous for its rich cultural heritage, historical sites, and vibrant cities. But with easy cross-border movement now, Poland started receiving a steady flow of European tourists as well. As tourism sector grew, it also led to the development of its peripheral industries, notably public transportation and hospitality. There is no denying the fact that Poland benefited a lot by joining the EU, but no other sector benefited as much as the Polish information technology sector. Poland's central location made it a convenient outsourcing destination for Western European companies. The well-connected transportation infrastructure, including airports and road networks, further facilitated business travel. Poland not only offered a strategic balance of cost competitiveness over Western European countries, but also ensured a continuous supply of highly skilled local professionals to these firms. It implemented a series of educational reforms and started producing talents, particularly in the STEM field, that were not only proficient in technical skills, but also multilingual, with many professionals fluent in English and other languages. The Polish government actively supported the growth of the IT sector through incentives such as tax breaks, grants, and investment-friendly policies. Poland also invested significantly in developing advanced IT infrastructure, ensuring that businesses operate with cutting-edge technologies. High-speed internet connectivity, modern technology parks, and research and development centers reinforced the sector's technological prowess. Cities like Krakow and Warsaw are now often listed among the top outsourcing destinations in Europe. We should also keep in mind that Poland has not only focused on improving its economic conditions, but the country has also put in a lot of effort in growing its military might. Poland has a history marked by invasions and occupations, including those during World War II and the Cold War era. As geopolitical dynamics began to evolve, Poland also began to recognize the need to strengthen its national defense. The first step in the direction was taken in 1999 when Poland joined the coveted NATO group. The annexation of Crimea by Russia in 2014 further heightened concerns in Eastern Europe about any future potential aggression. To further address such contemporary security challenges, Poland recognized the importance of modernizing its military through a combination of developing indigenous technology as well as acquiring foreign capabilities. Poland now boasts an arsenal of 292,000 active military personnel, 2,000-plus tanks, 120-plus fighter jets, 100-plus helicopters, and three submarines. But it is not all hunky-dory for Poland. There is a growing division that's widening the gap between right-wing Polish citizens and their left-wing counterparts. The EU-Polish relationship is at the lowest point in history, and the influx of refugees after the Russian invasion of Ukraine has poised a never-seen-before challenge for Poland. As we conclude our journey through the intricate tapestry of Poland and its economy, one thing becomes abundantly clear. Poland's story is one of contrasts, challenges, and colossal potential. Thank you for joining us on this eye-opening journey. For more riveting insights on global dynamics, don't miss our other compelling videos. Click the links on your screen and subscribe for more thought-provoking content.